Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a fresh update by RRG Research for Monday the 19th of September. I'm recording this on Thursday the 15th after the close of the markets in Europe. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Let's kick off with a look at the recent rotations for world indexes. You're looking at the weekly RRG for that group that we're monitoring here uh, on this show. And there's a few things that we can that we can observe here. I think one of the most important or maybe the most important trail at the moment is the one for uh, HSI, the Hang Seng Index in uh, Hong Kong. You can see it's very long, which means that there is a lot of power behind this move and it's powering into that lagging quadrant, meaning that there is in the, um, a downtrend versus the MSCI world, because that's what we're comparing it with. A couple of other things. Um, the Nifty in India is doing pretty well. There's a few ways you can trade those on the platform. Uh, there's a few ETFs uh, that you can use for that. Um, and... The other observation is that Europe seems to be taking over from the US. If you look at the stocks index, that's right here, you can see that that is turning back up while inside the weakening quadrant, and we know that that is a strong sign. And obviously you see similar rotations for the French CAC, uh, the German DAX, although that's inside lagging, but it's turning up. Uh, the UK is improving, it's not there yet, but it's improving. Um, but looking at the American indexes, the US indexes, you can see the NASDAQ rolling over here. You can see the Russell still moving right, but losing momentum. And the most important one, the S&P 500, is, is rotating contrary, contrary to the Europe stocks index. And then you got the Dow, the Indu tail right here, heading towards that lagging quadrant. So the big takeaway from this picture is that um, Europe seems to be improving versus the US. The Indian market, the Nifty, is doing remarkably well, I have to say. And the, uh, the big one to avoid is Hong Kong. If we switch to the daily version of this chart to get a shorter term pattern and maybe find um, confirmation of what we just discussed, then I think we can certainly see uh, the rotation for the Hang Seng here as well. Uh, rapidly rolling over, moving rapidly towards that lagging quadrant. So the weakness for the Hong Kong market is certainly visible here as well. We can also see the weakness for the US markets. We've got the Dow here, we've got the S&P starting to move uh, to the left. We've got the NASDAQ inside lagging, picking up a little bit of momentum after a big down move, uh, but it's far away from the center and to the left, so that's not the strongest thing that you can get here. And we've got the Russell that's moving into the lagging quadrant, and obviously we've got the DAX moving there. Um, Nifty, the Indian index, which, is, uh, which did very well on the weekly, is now losing some power here on the daily version, but it is the highest reading on the uh, RS ratio scale right here. So it's got plenty of time to maneuver and potentially um, curl back up while going through uh, the weakening quadrant. So for the time being, I'm gonna judge this as a temporary setback within that longer term improvement. I will add a few of the annotated charts in the accompanying article, uh, but the one that I want to bring up here is obviously the Hang Seng because that is the biggest move that we see at the moment. And it is right now breaking through an important support level. You can see the downtrend that's in place since February 2021. It's taken the market uh, a lot lower in a very regular rhythm of lower highs and lower lows. And at the moment, as we speak, we're actually breaking below that May 13 low or the week, that weekly low. There is a spike low here in March, but you can see that it recovered here because the bottom of the candle is right here around 20,000, 20,100. 20, so I'm going to use this level here as the major support level and it looks as if we are breaking it right now. You can see how that responds to the RRG lines and both are pushing lower. If you zoom in on the daily, then we get a better angle on that, what happened in that week. That was that spike low on the weekly. 
You can see that it's a single low right there. And here is the level that I'm watching right now. That's the May low. We tested that one, two, three times, broke it. And now last week we tested it from the, from the bottom as a resistance. So this old support level came back as resistance and we're now working our way lower. So please keep an eye on those levels. Um, 19, let's say 19,500 on the upside. And then you, you really get a confirmation for weakness when the Hang Seng Index takes out 18,000, let's say 18,400. Going forward, we had an idea, we have an idea to potentially get you some more actionable trade ideas that are potentially looking at some shorter term moves. So it's still work in progress, but one of the things that we do with RRG and in RRG research is try to see if we can sort of quantify the moves that we see uh, those tails making. And we already talked to you, talked a few times about the RRG heading. That's when a tail moves into a heading between zero and 90 degrees. Think in terms of a compass between zero degrees and 90 degrees. That's when um, the indicators are both going up. So on the RRG, the tail is picking up strength on both axes. That's a strong sign. Then also a thing that is uh, that we know is strong is RRG velocity. And RRG velocity is uh, the distance between two observations on a tail. The bigger that distance, the stronger that move, obviously. And when that RRG velocity is increasing, so that distance is increasing on the tail, that tells us that there is increasing strength in that tail, in that stock. And then obviously at the end of the day, we want a stock to move up or for the time being, I know we can do shorts and stuff, but for the time being, we're focusing on the long side and we want to have stocks or we want to look at stocks that are going up. And I've sort of arbitrarily defined that as being above their 10 day moving average. So what we've been doing is running some scans and running some what we call signal tests using these three elements. And um, I, I'll try to describe that a little bit better in the article and show you a, a graphic of that. <clears throat> but when we do that on the uh, 350 stocks in the UK index, um, we can scan for the stocks that met those criteria this week, or as a matter of fact, today, as of today. I have added that list or, uh, or put that list on an RRG. And as of today, these names popped up, fulfilling all three criteria. And this is the RRG that belongs to it. And almost immediately, quite clearly, there's two names that stand out. That's N-E-T-W and this is the chart that belongs to it, is Network International Holdings. And lo and behold, you can see that it is breaking above that important resistance level. Our G line is very strong. Trend is super strong there. So I'm going to look at that chart in the article, as well as for TUI. TUI are gay, trading in London. You can see that this could very well be the beginning of a double bottom in the making. Still some work to be done. I'll describe that in the article, but you can see that the RG lines are putting up and you can see that it is rotating towards that leading quadrant. This type of approach gives us the possibility to provide you hopefully on a weekly basis with some uh, individual stocks that have some potential based on a historical test of which we know that the outcome is positive mostly um, about 10 days into the future. And that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week at a fresh update by RRG Research. Same time, same place.